Afternoon. Luke Johnson joins us, co host of the Eagle Hour on Super Talk Laurel and Super Talk Hattiesburg. You certainly uh, can always listen to that via podcast and uh, can go back and listen to the archives as well at supertalk.fm. Uh, Luke, what's up, man? Hope you had a great uh, Monday off, Memorial Day. It was. Did some yard work. Just enjoyed. Uh... Thinking about what's to come this week. Excited. We've been talking college baseball, but high school baseball state championships uh, starting off today, guys. I don't know if you've been following the, the Ole Miss or State side of it. Southern Miss has got five teams connected with players. Ty Keyes is playing for Taylorsville. He's batting 384 uh, as, as they play this weekend. And two of those fo- other football commits, Chandler Pittman and Zay Franks, wide receiver commits for Southern Miss, they're playing for McGee in the state championship. So, all that starts today in Trustmark. Any chance Ty Keys is a two-sport guy, or is it all football as soon as this baseball season's over? I'd, I'd ask Will Hall the next time you talk to him. He's been a three-sport guy at at, uh, at Taylorsville, and really no one's ever seen him, how good he could be when he just commits to one sport. So I bet uh, Scott Berry may call over there to the football office, but, but Will may not respond back. <laughs> Understandably so. Um, Southern Miss coming to the Oxford Regional along with uh, Florida State, Southeast Missouri State, of course, Ole Miss hosting. But, Luke, it feels like we've got to start out by talking about what might have been. I know a disappointing weekend in Ruston. Southern Miss needed one win uh, against Louisiana Tech on Saturday uh, in what was a winner's bracket game, or it would have been a winner's bracket game for Southern Miss, and then an elimination game. And that's probably the distant uh, the difference in the Golden Eagles being on the road versus being at home at Pete Taylor Park. You can quote me from Friday, Richard. What did I tell you? Two things that Eagles do. Well, they did the second one, and uh, it really came down to just a couple innings. In in the first game, Drew Boyd, who we talked about the pitching rotation, Boyd started Game Three simply because he had been better against Tech. He had a no hitter going into the uh, the fifth inning, and the Eagles were up eight to nothing, and. They just uh, imploded there, and we had Tech hit them with a six spot, and then the two teams went back and forth, and uh, you know Tech just pulled it out in the bottom of the tenth. And some of the uh, it, it's been kind of a trade off. The, the good pitching for the Golden Eagles has really in, down the stretch didn't allow some of their their bullpen arms to get work. And we talked to Scott Berry yesterday on the Eagle Hour and talked to Christian Ostrander, the pitching coach today, and both of them, you know said, yeah, that, that played a part in it when you have uh, – Oz said it best. He said, well, you know, I, I wouldn't trade it for terrible starting pitching. But uh, – and, and then in the, the nightcap, you felt like Tech had the, the momentum. The Eagles came back. If, if your listeners didn't follow that game, Slade Wilkes, the freshman from Columbia Academy, hit a three-run bomb like Matt Warner-esque in the top of the ninth, you know, pinch hitting to, to take the, the Eagles into that lead. And then Tech got to walk it off. You know, it's a – Nothing to complain about. Conference USA had a real weird rule that the high seed got to host no matter what. So Tech played six games in the tournament, all six games, including the championship. They were the home team on their own field. But all three times Southern Miss uh, played Tech, even in the winner's bracket, uh, they had to be visitors. And so Tech, you know, walked them off twice like that. And, yeah, it's just, uh, it's just, yeah, we talked about it Friday and, and it happened Saturday. You know, it's funny you say that. I, I saw that um, Trey Schaap, a buddy of ours in, in Little Rock that covers Arkansas and has for a long time, was making the point that it was crazy that Arkansas in a, a semifinal game, I guess it was against Ole Miss, was the uh, the visiting team. And I started to send him a message like, oh, well, man, you're, you're starting the excuses before first pitch. But there's something to the idea of if you win the conference, maybe you've earned the right to be the home team but that certainly is a quirk because that's generally speaking not the way it is. I don't hate that rule, but boy, it can kind of come back and bite you if you're not careful. Also, I don't. I don't hate the first part of the rule, but when you beat a team as the visitor and they come out of the losers bracket and you're undefeated, it sure seems like you would then get the benefit of the doubt being in the winners bracket. Either way, you yeah. know, whatever it is, you, you got to take care of business, and the Eagles didn't do it. Uh, and, yeah, so th- that's what happened Saturday. And just to comment, because we talked to Barry and Ostrander about this, you know, Dustin Dickerson, it, that move has been criticized supremely. And it's, it's one of those moves where you uh, – it's like going for two when you're when you're down one. If you get it, you're a genius. If you don't get it, 
uh, you look you look bad. And both of them said yesterday and today they would have done it again. Dickerson was recruited to to Southern Miss as both a pitcher and an infielder. His his dad Bobby is the third base coach for the Padres. Big time baseball IQ, and and he's been throwing tens and. And uh, Coach Oz kind of hinted today that we would see him on the mound next year for Southern Miss a lot more. Just the uh, infield depth this year really hadn't allowed him to uh, to pitch as much as maybe they wanted him to. Was there any other option available when when ultimately they went uh, the route of Dickerson coming over from shortstop to, to try and close it out? You know, they mentioned Hunter Stanley had, had pitched more pitches. His pitch count on Wednesday night was more than he would have been all year. Powell was in the 70-plus range. They didn't either one of them hinted at that, but they basically said, you know, bullpen arms to go to in that situation were depleted. Ramsey was up in the bullpen, but the, the closer, but he has not been good with, with, like, inheriting runners on base. He's been good just starting afresh. And so, you know, they were just trying to catch lightning in the bottle. And, you know, Dickerson got three outs. They they dropped a, a pop fly on third base, and then uh, Faustin Garrity, you know, couldn't uh, – couldn't, communicate on that shallow ball to right field and so Dickerson did his job it wasn't yeah. so if you're going to put all the blame on Dustin Dickerson he did what needed to be done as a pitcher let me ask you this because I mean Luke we've obviously talked about Southern Miss with, with you and among ourselves all season long and so maybe have some familiarity with this team but I think there are a lot of people that are probably locking in on Southern Miss that, that hadn't previously um, because they're going to be in the the Oxford Regional so Ryan Ock Best arm out of the bullpen, 20 appearances, stupid good numbers. Hunter Stanley, Walker Powell, Ben Etheridge, Drew Boyd as the primary starters. And we know the front line starting pitching has been really good. What about after Ock out of the bullpen? Is that the the Achilles heel for this team? It has been. You saw how they, they rode him. Chandler Best is a really good arm, Gatorade player of the year a couple of years ago in Alabama. He was unavailable, um, not by the – not arm-related issues, but he had a few issues. He was unavailable for FAU in the conference tournament. He'll be back for the regional. He's a guy they would go to. Tyler Stewart, big 6'9", righty from Illinois. He can get up around 98. He's been the guy. And then, you know, Ramsey was lights out to start the season. We talked about that. And and uh, like I just mentioned, he's, he hasn't been quality when, when people come in on base. So, yeah, Ramsey is a guy that maybe could come in and, and start fresh an inning. Uh, Tanner Hall is a guy, uh, good control, has some run on his pitches. And, uh, you know, guys that we really haven't seen uh, that we thought we might see, uh, you know, a guy like Cody Carroll. And, and I guess really what we haven't talked about all year with Southern Miss, Gabe Shepard has made two appearances all year because of, of injuries. What would the yeah. pitching staff be like with Gabe Shepard? Yeah, there's there's no question about that. Let me uh, let me ask you this, Luke. Uh, we've only got a couple of minutes left. Uh, reaction to being placed in the Oxford Regional? I mean, that was kind of expected, wasn't it? After uh, it felt like they were were not going to be a host. Yeah, just frustrating, simply because Hattiesburg loses out. The you know the uh, Mississippi with three hosts loses out. But yeah, I mean, I, I think Golden Eagle fans are. Uh, are pleased with that. I don't think anybody wanted to go to Starkville with, with their their pitching uh, staff and and uh, but yeah, I mean Southern Miss looks at this and and it's kind of uh, it, it's kind of par for the course. We're ready for a tough regional. Ole Miss is outstanding, and at Florida State, a lot of people felt they could be a two seed, and Simo won won their league, and so yeah, I think Golden Eagles are up for the challenge. I mean, they're they're thankful that it's going to be a great environment. Scott Barry talked about that yesterday, and I asked him specifically what was the guy's reaction and yeah i mean everybody's excited if you if you want to you know get to a super you know go through a a really tough regional and and so in some ways they're excited to be a part of that as as the two seed and i think southern miss fans will enjoy enjoy the trip up there's banner back and forth but there's gonna be something playing uh, something about playing in front of 12 13 thousand people and every southern miss fan will enjoy that for sure yeah, I was going to say. I mean, you know, the fact that it's it's a doable trip for fans. Uh, I mean, as opposed to going and being a two seed in Tucson or Lubbock or somewhere like that, uh, th- there's got to be a little bit of something that's kind of cool about that. that. Hey, it's not that hard if I want to go see my team play in uh, in postseason. Certainly going to be a fun weekend. You going to make it up at all? Yeah, I'll be up there Friday and Saturday for sure. Okay, well, I'll be sure to not find you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll be sure to uh, to look you up while we're while you're here. Sounds good. Thanks, Luke.